Hello, today I'll be presenting the paper, Perspectives of Bioartists and Community Lab Organizers on Working with Living Organisms, written by myself, Nisa Azgrali Hoffman, and Dr. Fouad Hamidi. What is bioart? Bioart is a contemporary art movement that is comprised of a hybrid of artistic and scientific practices which engage in the use of biomaterials, such as living cells, tissues, and organisms, and scientific techniques, protocols, and tools. Here are two examples of bioart. While there has been research in the HCI community on the promising collaborations between HCI researchers and DIY bio participants, there has not been much exploration into the unique qualities associated with artistic practices that could be beneficial for the HCI audience, a gap we hope to address with this work. We conducted 12 semi-structured interviews with bio artists, community biology lab organizers, and educators, some of whom fit into several or all of these categories. Next, I'll present some of our findings. We found four themes and nine sub-themes across interviews, but in the interest of time for this presentation, I will focus on the cultural and social role of bioartists. I'm going to present several quotes by participants as ideas to contemplate. In the interest of time, I won't read them, but feel free to pause the video and read them yourself. Several participants acknowledged using bioart as an approach to explore and interrogate questions of identity and how it interacts with structures of power. Mary Magic spoke about how their work was influenced by their identity as a non-binary artist. In this quote, they touch on whose bodies have access to hormones, societal structures of power, agency, and body sovereignty. The interest in exploring how structures of power interact with our bodies through bioart was a common theme across interviews. They further described how their perspectives have shifted as a result of their identity work through their art practice. They spoke of democratization and decentralization, and offering alternative perspectives to the dominant one in science. Brian Hammond, in speaking about their Open Estrogen project, echoed the focus on critiquing or uncovering pervasive systems of power in their work. Our participants' exploration of identity and power is in line with what Nora Vaggi describes as art's ability to create opportunities for audience members to critically examine and develop their moral frameworks. The next sub-theme sub is sparking dialogue and cultural production. Carolyn Angleton explained that the importance of artists engaging in biology is that they do not just seek to understand the biological processes, as perhaps a scientist does, but they also seek to understand how scientific practices fit into the social context when using science to envision the future. Ryan Hammond also spoke about using their work as a bioartist to critique complex cultural and social histories, which are often dense topics, in a way that would capture the attention of an audience. They hope they could use their work to distill this important conversation in a way that is easily accessible, even to those with perhaps a low level of biotechnological literacy. Carolyn Angleton saw the role of artists as distinct from researchers and scientists, which often seeks to find definitive answers to questions. They explained the role of artists as in not necessarily taking a stance for or against a topic or idea, but in presenting a dialogue and forcing society to confront tough and important questions. Kinlu extended this critical eye to bioart itself, stating the importance of interrogating the reasons for creating bioart. They noted the way that some artists create for the purpose of shock value, reflecting the privilege they already enjoy in society. These perspectives show that bioartists saw their practice as distinct and yet in dialogue with biology and design, and as a tool for cultural production and dialogue. In conclusion, here are the themes we found to be important for the UCI community to consider in the future of designing living media interfaces. First, our findings show that bioartists, educators, and community organizers who work at the intersection of art and biology view living organisms as particularly rich sources of knowledge and inspiration. Bioart can engage the public in transdisciplinary and often ethically oriented conversations about science, technology, art, and social structures. Our findings show a need for cross disciplinary collaboration between scientists, designers, and bioethicists in order to ensure that living organisms are not exploited. Previously, Kuznet Salve et al. found that DIY bio operates across intersections, or seams, between professional science, hacker subcultures, and the general public. This idea was echoed by several of our bio artist participants, who emphasized the successful collaborations they had with scientists and scientific organizations. The findings show that bio art has been and continues to be a site of exploration and interrogation of sociopolitical and ethical concerns. Our participants grappled with questions of colonialism, power, gender, nationality, access, and agency. They shared similar concerns that have been expressed by the sustainable HCI and animal computer interaction communities. We believe there are further possibilities for conversation between the HCI and bioart communities about existing value tensions and working with living media, 
as well as furthering the value-sensitive approach to HCI research. Finally, I would like to thank our participants for sharing their beautiful and thought-provoking insights.